The Arctic is one of the quietest places on Earth, a peaceful soundtrack to the rhythms of daily life. And beneath the frigid waters, a vibrant ecosystem filled with life. Belugas, narwhal, seals, walrus, all communicating through complex vocalizations. But more recently, there's been a change. It's impacting our life. A lot of hunters are coming back empty-handed. We need many more speed reductions for vessels in the Arctic. Each ship needs a plan and a target for real, real results and to be achieved. If you're an animal trying to be heard in this noisy environment, it's very difficult to be heard in amongst ship noise. So how exactly does ship noise affect the Arctic and its ecosystems? And what are we doing about it? Across Arctic waters, massive ships as big as 250 meters are traveling through the Arctic, in numbers higher than ever before. But why is it that ships are now an issue for the Arctic regions? There is no question the reduction of sea ice in the Arctic is, is opening up new routes, new areas through where, through where ships can actually transit through. For this reason, it's very, very important to really understand how this type of noise in the underwater environment is affecting the marine mammals, many of species of which are endemic to the Arctic and only occur in these regions and that are very, very important for the people who have been living off them and depending on them for thousands of years. The effects on both the wildlife and Inuit communities have been significant. What we used to see with bigger marine wildlife like narwhals, they'd, they'd be passing through for a few hours, thousands and thousands of them. But since there has been constant ships passing through practically all summer long, we, we don't see narwhals anymore. Animals uh, like marine mammals and fish and even invertebrates use sound for all these critical aspects of their lives. They communicate with each other using sound, they may navigate and find their food using sound, and the sound in their environment may help them to get around, kind of know where they are. And so sound for, for animals, again like marine mammals, is a really important part of their lives. We're finding that some Arctic species like beluga and narwhal are reacting at incredible distances to ship noise and they're changing their behavior. They're moving away from it, they're speeding up their swim speed. When they get closer to the ship, they're changing their diving behavior, they're spending less time doing deep foraging dives and instead they're staying close to the surface, traveling with very shallow dives very quickly, getting away from that ship. To better understand the impacts of sound in the ocean, researchers use a device called a hydrophone. A hydrophone is basically an underwater microphone in that it takes sound that we can then take and analyze and figure out, well, what happened in the acoustic environment during that time. It offers us the possibility of leaving an hydrophone recording for an entire year and really get an understanding on what the environment sounds like and that translates to what environment looks like. But science is only one piece of the puzzle. Understanding the impacts of ocean noise in the Arctic means talking to the people who know it best. Both science and indigenous knowledge contribute to a more informed decision pathway for uh, development projects and um, marine protection. There's a good example in, uh, around Baffinland Mine. Community members have provided indigenous knowledge about the behavior, locations, health, and abundance of uh, marine mammals, historical perspectives, and migration patterns. And that's how sometimes Indigenous knowledge can contribute to decision-making uh, when it comes to big uh, issues like this that affect communities. The best advances that we've made in applying the research tools that we have have been by listening to people tell us what's needed and listening to people uh, who care and who really know to learn things that actually are useful and applicable to you know, management and resources and, and people and ecosystems. So what does the future look like for managing noise pollution in the Arctic? Currently, we have notice to mariners that can provide voluntary speed reductions and notify ships on which areas to avoid. Voluntary guidelines like the Notmar are good for small vessels, for larger ships. Those are the ones that haven't 
really been adjusting their behavior yet. And those are the ones that these voluntary guidelines might not be sufficient for. If it's keep going the way it is with no changes, hunters will be impacted food-wise and culturally, and younger generation will lose out on traditional knowledge. We can't do everything alone. We don't have the expertise in everything that we do, but partnerships uh, are the way forward to, to be effective, to make good, sound, um, solid regulations and policies. The issue of underwater noise and its impact on marine mammal populations is largely unaddressed in the Canadian Arctic. Protected areas that don't address underwater noise may not be successful in retaining biodiversity. We need to work together to research and implement best practices for noise reduction in the Arctic and across Canadian waters. Mm -hmm.